sa iyong mga kamay ang paghilom ng iyong bayan. Pakinggan ang inaalay ang handog ng puso nagsisisi. Taglay na pag-asa sa aming bukas Kalugan ang inaalay Ang handog ng bansang nagsisisi
Good morning, everyone! Welcome to our 10 a.m. service. We are so happy and glad to have you this morning. And if kaya na po, if uh, magluwag pa, magbelieve tayo na mas lumuwag pa yung mga restrictions, we really want to see you on site. In fact, for the past weeks, we've been meeting sa UP Town Center and sobrang saya iba talaga pag mag-worship ng sama-sama. But for now, we still believe that God will meet you this morning. And so as we start our uh, service and as we worship today, I just want to exhort all of us in Psalm 34 verse 1. Sabi po dito, I will bless the Lord at all times and His praise shall continually be in my mouth. We know that many things are happening around us, ang gulo-gulo ng politics, uh, we know what's happening in Ukraine, in the world, but I believe na one of the strongest weapon that we have is our worship, our praises, and our thanksgiving unto God. When was the last time that we were able to say, God, I still praise you. God, you are still good. God, you are still sovereign. And so this morning, that's our declaration, God, na kahit anong nangyayari sa paligid namin, we are still in our soul, we are steadfast in our faith, and we are secure in you. So Lord, we'll live up to you this service, we'll live up to you this day, this week, this year. Father, thank you na sobrang mahal mo kami, God. Blessed be your name, O God. Thank you, Lord, na as we worship you, there's something moving in the supernatural. You're moving in our behalf. You're moving in our nation, God, and you will never fail. And so, God, we want to welcome you. We want to worship and encounter you today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.
Yes, God. God, you are worthy, Lord. You are holy. You are worthy, Father. And I believe that today, God, I believe there are listeners and uh, church members right now, God, who's been feeling like, Lord, kailan darating yung breakthrough? I feel like most of us, yung nararamdaman natin ay doubts, delays, disappointments. And I believe that today, God wants to remind us na hindi nagbabago yung love niya. Maybe some of you are looking for answers and clarity. And God is saying, actually, you don't need breakthrough right now. You just need to be reminded of my love. You just need to be reminded how much I travel just to purchase your life. And today, we want to respond in worship, in humility, na kahit God, hindi namin naiintindihan. Walang clarity, Lord, pero may peace. Walang, walang sagot, God, pero may presence mo. And so, God, today, God, I just want to lift up to you our church members, God, those of us, those of, um, those sons and daughters, Lord, who's been listening right now, and they're in pain, And, and thank you, God, that you want to tell them that you see them. And today, we, we want to take time to really remember yung love na yun. Ano bang itsura ng love ni God na yun? And so we'll be partaking communion together. And I want to read from 1 Corinthians 11, uh, verse 23 to 26. It says there, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he, was bes- but when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me, for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Can we just declare that, Lord, thank you na mahal mo kami. Thank you, Lord, na hindi na bago, hindi na talo, hindi na wala, Lord, yung finish work mo sa cross. And so, God, we t- today, God, we want to do this communion together and remember what you have done on the cross. So we, we can take the bread and the juice. Thank you, Lord. Can you just say that in your heart? God, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you, God, for your mercy. In fact, God, we deserve death. We deserve the worst of worst, Lord. But here we are. We're still breathing. We still have food on our tables. We can still worship you. We can still um, gather with our family, with our loved ones. And so, God, thank you for sacrificing your life on the cross. And thank you that we can put our faith in you, God, because you never fail, Lord. And so we praise you, God. You are worthy of our lives, our time, our devotion, our worship. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Okay. So, pwede po muna tayong huminga. Magpunas ng luha kung medyo naiyak. Um, for our time of giving, I want to encourage all of us in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. It says there, Bring the full tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and thereby put me to the, to the test, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven for you, and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need. I believe that this is a time that God wants to remind us that we are not lacking. In fact, we are overflowing if we only put our faith in Him. And, and so as you give, I, wanna, I want all of us to be in faith to bless, to give, to really give back to God what He deserves. And so if you want to give, you may um, go to victory.org.ph slash give and you will find all the ways and options on how you can give uh, through that link. And, and for those who would like to drop your tithes and offerings here in Regis, 
you may do so until 3 p.m. And of course, uh, we know we all know what's happening in Ukraine and the European part of the world. And we also want to give you the opportunity to bless and be part of the disaster relief operations that we're doing for our churches there and for the people there. And so if you want to give and, and take part in be, um, giving to the relief effort, efforts for Ukraine, you may go through um, victory.org.ph slash disaster dash relief dash ukraine or you can scan the qr code i think it will be flashed Ayan. but you can check the link and makikita po natin doon uh, paano tayo makakapag bless and we co let's continue to pray for our uh, for the people there even for the for russia for the nations na affected nito let's really really be part of this na makapag bless tayo makapagbigay tayo ng shelter para sa mga refugees and food and medicine para sa mga nangangailangan. So, uh, later we'll be praying for Ukraine and for our last announcement before we go to the preaching of the word. Last na po to, yan. We will be having an on-site worship night. Yan. So, pwede niyo po bang itype sa chat, on-site worship night. This will be on March 3, uh, March 3, 7 p.m. at the UP Town Center Cinema 2. So we will be also um, streaming this online sa YouTube, but we really encourage you to be uh, on site with us kasi sobrang excited po kaming mag-worship kasama kayo. So you may, tama ba may registration to, no? Yes, so you may register through the link na makikita po natin sa comment section. And see you there on March 3. So for the preaching of the word, let's all ready our hearts to hear from Pastor Glenn Luna. I, good morning, everyone. Thank you for that, Gio. I hope you were encouraged, you were just refreshed uh, with our time of worship this morning. Um, before we get into the message, I'd like to just, we'd like to take some time to just pray for what's happening in Ukraine. It, it's really some, it's, and we're praying for this um, because at the end of the day, what is happening in Ukraine and between Ukraine and Russia is something that affects everyone in the world. Okay? Not just in terms of conflict and refugees and all of those things, but really even economically. Okay? So Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for you are sovereign in that part of the world. And we speak your peace, Lord God, to come true, Lord God. I pray for breakthroughs in conversations and negotiations, Lord God. I pray of softening of hearts for the leaders. I pray, God, that they will have a long-term view of of these things, Lord God, and, and, and see really that war is not an option. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Anyway, again, we'd like to welcome you to our 10 a.m. service. We are in the last part of this two-part series, Stable and Sure. And last week, we actually had Pastor Mike Gayatao um, talk to us and, and share to us about Jesus being our strength, our song, and now we're salvation. Today, as we continue talking about Jesus as our, as our cornerstone, I'd like to read from Acts chapter 4, starting from verse 5. It says that, On the next day, the rulers and elders and scribes gathered together in Jerusalem, in verse 6, with Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and all who were of the high priestly family. Verse 7, and when they had set them in the midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Okay, so yung kausap nitong mga officials na to is si Peter and si John. Later, I'll explain the context. But verse 8, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, If we are being examined today concerning a good deed done to a crippled man, by what means this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you that to, and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God has raised from the dead, by him, this man is standing before you well. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. Verse 12, And there is salvation 
in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So, question, what's going on here? Okay, para pagpasok natin sa eksena, describe yung setting, nandun yung mga leaders ng Jews, ng Israelites, and, and, and they're with Peter and John. Basically, for you to have a full, uh, really a good picture of this, you may want to read Acts chapter 3. three. We're not going to jump there and really read everything, but just know that what happened in Acts chapter 3 is basically, there was a, a, a man born lame, and he was begging for alms, okay? And dumaan si Peter and si John, okay, nalimo siya kay Peter and John, and then sabi ni Peter, okay, wala silang silver coins, ganyan, but what I give to you is this. And then he says, and then he basically just commanded the guy to stand up. And then tinulungan niyan tumayo. And it was such a miraculous healing that has happened that the people who were around, yung, yung sanay na nakikita siya kasi daily nandun yung yung man na yon was amazed. Actually, so, uh, it, it, scripture, uh, Acts chapter 3, Luke describes it, na tuwang-tuwa pa tong uh, man na to. And yun yung nangyayari ngayon. Because of that, what happened, and what happens kasi after is, basically Peter went on and preached about Jesus being resurrected. And because of these two things, ki, dun, ki, dun, ano, dun sila din nakip, nung uh, mga Jews. And then, in, at this point, in, in the, the scripture that we read, kina, tinatanong sila. Okay? And yun, dun pumasok yung question sa verse 7 na binasa natin. By what power or by what name did you do this? And we're looking at this specific text because, interestingly, in verse 11, just like Jesus, Peter would quote Psalm 118, verse 22. In verse 11, yun yung sabi ni Peter dun eh. This Jesus is a stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And yun yung setting nun. Yung, yung, yung konteksto nung pag, pag-quote ni Peter ng text na yun, pag, pag-sabi niya about Jesus being the cornerstone, is in that setting, in, uh, it's part of his reply and answer with the question of the authorities, by what power or by what name you did this. And, and the reason why they ask it that way, they ask it that way because in their thinking, yung, yung power and yung name kasi in a way parang the same eh. So parang they're asking, sino yung tao na nagre-represent nung power na yon? Saan yung inquiry nyo? Saan yung nakuha yan? Saan nang galing yon? Okay? And now, that's where we find the scripture that we're reading and in this text that we've read, we learn something about Jesus. So the first thing that we learn about Jesus is that in Jesus, we find healing. In Jesus, we find healing. Verse 10, Let it be known to all of you, this is Peter talking, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God has raised from the dead, by Him, this man is standing before you well. By him. By Jesus. Yes, Peter yung nagsabing stand up, ganyan. But it was Jesus who healed that person. You know, as, as I was preparing for this message, it, it actually led me to, even right now, just ask siguro, how are you? As you're listening to this message, Kamusta ka? What are you feeling now? Are you feeling good? Are you? How are you? What are you thinking? What's going on? You see, in, in this conversation, and the reason why I asked that question is because we learn a truth that in, in talking to them, Peter emphasized the truth that the healing or the power to be able to heal came from Jesus. And while yes, the healing was physical in nature, and, and that's possible, we believe in, in miraculous physical healings, Jesus is able to do that definitely. But I also believe that as we get into this message, that God wants to heal your inmost being as well. God wants to heal us in our souls. 
That's why, if you don't mind me asking as well, as you listen to this message, are you hurting? What are you feeling now? For, if you don't mind, for how long? How long have you been hurting? You see, if you will read Acts 3 verse 2, the, the condition of the layman, and the layman from birth was being carried from birth. How long have you been hurting? Some of us probably been hurting for months, some of us years from birth. The point is, no matter how long we have been experiencing pain in our souls, we can find healing in Jesus. Jesus is able to heal. And the, and the healing may, imagine you, ah, since birth. So, so, the healing may not come tomorrow or today after this message. Probably may not come also next week. But you and I can be guaranteed of the truth that there is still healing in Jesus. Another question for you. How frequently do you experience or are you reminded of the pain? And I ask the question because do we experience it sometimes, often, daily? Because for the lame man, he was experiencing yung limitations, siguro yung pain or yung parang, oh man, hindi nangyari ito or ganyan. Every day, every time, he is reminded of what he is going through. And, and maybe it's the same for us. The, the, the pain that we've experienced or the hurt that we've experienced is, is like something na it's there constantly. It haunts you. It's something that's like the rising of the sun, the setting of the sun, na parang okay. It's just part of my daily life and routine. And then probably some of us, yung wound na yon or yung pain na yon is something great and the wound so deep that we're thinking, alam mo, ganito to forever, Pastor Glenn eh. I feel like, invest ko na rin pinag-pray ito, invest ano, ganito na to eh. While, while I hear you, I would like to say though that in Jesus, I believe it will not be forever. It, it's possible that we would experience it in our lifetime, but definitely not forever. And that's where we continue with what Peter was saying in response to, um, to the council, basically. Verse 11, 12, This Jesus is stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. Verse 12, And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. You see, the reason why I said... Um, we may experience pain throughout our lifetime, but it is not forever. It's because in Jesus, we not only find healing, but in Jesus, we ultimately find salvation. And the second thing, that, and that's the second thing I'd like to emphasize. As we talk about those who Jesus is, as we, we go around that text of, of Jesus being the cornerstone. You see, it's so interesting that that, 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 Description of Jesus being the cornerstone that people has rejected is sandwiched between two characteristics of who Jesus is. The first is that His capability to heal and meet our needs. And the second is Him being the source of salvation for all. And it's so interesting that, G that Peter did not merely proclaim Jesus as the way of salvation, but sinabi niya, He is the only way of salvation. The words that he used in describing is, he said, no one else. No other name under heaven. And to some people, the idea that there is no salvation in other way, other people, um, could be hard to accept. I understand. But this is something that is clearly and plainly stated and confessed even by Peter. The problem and, and the challenge with us is that we do have a tendency to set other things in our lives as saviors. 
looking at these other things as ultimate sources for our security, ultimate pleasure, and ultimate source of life. Yet at the end of the day, looking at through these other things for our ultimate security, ultimate pleasure, and ultimate source of life, they pale in comparison to the true giver of life, to the true Savior, the ultimate Savior, Jesus Christ. Because there is no one else, no other name. It is Jesus who is able to save us. And we can't even save ourselves. No good works, no good deeds of us can save us. Only Jesus can. Which is why I'd like to encourage you, if you're listening to this message, I don't know, first time or you've been with us for quite some time. You've been attending, you've been watching. If you have not placed your trust in Christ alone for salvation, I'd like to give you an opportunity later to make that decision. As I land this message, as I've said, yung characteristic of Jesus being the cornerstone, interestingly, is, is part of the three-verse declaration of Peter about who Jesus is. That, that first, he is... He's a someone who healed this guy. That's in a way what, what Peter is saying. And the second thing that Peter says is that in him alone is salvation. Yung katotohanan ng pagiging cornerstone ni Jesus and pagiging importante ni Jesus that these people that he was talking to rejected is in a way established by these truths. And church, basically what I want to say as I land this message is the truth that at the end of the day, Jesus as our cornerstone entails as well that we will find ultimate healing in Him and we find salvation in Jesus. I pray that this week will not just be an ordinary week for you, but this week will be a supernatural week for you where you would encounter the healing that comes from Jesus and the assurance and security of the salvation that is from Him as well. Let us pray. Father, we thank You for the truth and for reminding us that You are, a, you are so close to us. You are able to heal us. You know our affliction. You know the cry of our hearts. You understand us full well. And thank you that even right now, you're telling your people, you know, you're assuring them that you know what they're going through. You're assuring them that you are not turning a blind eye. You're assuring them that you care, you are near, and that you love them. And thank you, Lord, that healing can be found in you. If you are here attending with us, kahit nasa makawaya, nasa about or wherever you are seated as you're listening to this watching to this and and God's just as you're listening to this message you're just reminded of your mga pain or hurts that you're experiencing right now or, or mga siguro merong iba kala mo okay na pero man you're just reminded of that I want you to just lift up your hand before God right now as we pray Lord I pray for your supernatural touch, just heal them, God. Lord, I pray for grace to endure as well. I, I thank you, God, that you're speaking your peace and your rest to be upon their souls right now to experience you supernaturally. You're reminding them that you are drawing near. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. i also like to take some time to as I've said kanina, if you're here, you've net, you have not yet made that decision to surrender your life to Jesus, to put your trust in what Christ had done on the cross, I'd like to give that opportunity to you this morning. Okay, So with your head bowed, eyes closed, if you make, you're making that decision today to surrender your life to Jesus, follow me as I pray. Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner and a rebel. And this morning, I make that decision to surrender my life to you and to acknowledge you as the Lord and Savior of my life. That God, I cannot save myself. 
but what you have done on the cross, your sacrifice on the cross, is so that I could experience having a personal relationship with you. I could experience the eternal life that you have in store for me. I surrender my life to you and I put my trust in what you have done on the cross that it is enough for me to be reconciled to the Father. In Jesus' name, Amen, Amen, Amen. Okay, so at this point, as we dismiss, I'd like to just pray for one more prayer for all of us here who's listening to this message. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness and goodness this week. I pray for your people, God, that they will continue to look to you and depend on you. And and they will continue to never forget that you are a cornerstone in their lives. A source of security, stability, hope, even for the future, God. We commit your people to today. God bless them, Lord, in their work, in their schools, and in their endeavors that they have this coming week. In Jesus' name, Amen, Amen, Amen. Now, so yon, you are all dismissed. Going to victory of our God. See you next week as we start a new series. God bless. Bye-bye.